Hi, my loves. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Karam ear. Okay. So, let's get into your prophetic word for today, okay? Um, while I was sleeping, I heard knowledge comes when you are free, okay? The scripture God gives me comes from Genesis 47, 1 through 12. Joseph went and told Pharaoh, My father and brothers with their flocks and herds and everything they own have come from the land of Canaan and are now in Goshen. He chose five of his brothers and presented them before Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked the brothers, what is your occupation? Your servants are shepherds. They replied to Pharaoh, just as our fathers were. They also said to him, we have come to live here for a while because the famine is severe in Canaan and your servants flocks have no pasture. So now please let your servants settle in Goshen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, your father and your brothers have come to you and the land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and brothers in the best part of the land. Let them live in Goshen. And if you know of any among them with a special ability, please uh, put them in charge of my own livestock. Then Joseph brought his father Jacob in and presented him before Pharaoh. After Jacob blessed Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked him, how old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, the years of my pilgrimage are 130. My years have been few and difficult, and they do not equal the years of the pilgrimage of my fathers. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from his presence. So Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Egypt, gave them property in the best part of the land, the district of Ramesses, as Pharaoh directed. Joseph also provided his father and his brothers and all his father's household with food according to the number of their children. All right, y'all. Ironically, y'all know, y'all know when your girl gets a scripture to go with a dream, I literally ask God to lead me to the scripture and open the Bible to the scripture. I do read it to ensure that it matches. And y'all, okay, this is Joseph's story. If y'all don't know the story of Joseph, Joseph was imprisoned by his brothers. He was sent off to slavery. He eventually um, was pulled out of slavery by the Pharaoh himself and was put on a high pedestal and he saved his family. And this is the point to where he is saving his family. So to someone, you may not have literally been, uh, literally been sold off to slavery or you may have been literally sold off to slavery. Um, I do know in this world today, slavery does still exist. Um, you know, I even saw a recent story about my hometown where a girl um, came down here trying to work at a club and ended up getting kidnapped, okay? Regardless if she was kidnapped or if she was murdered, you know, um, something awful happened to her. But um, that's beside the point. My point is slavery does still exist. It just doesn't exist in the same sense that it did in the past. Um, and I'm saying that to say this is for someone you may feel like you have been sold off to slavery or maybe you have been sold off to uh, inhumane conditions, regardless if your family deliberately sold you off or if you, you know, whatever happened. Um, once you were free, you will be able to know the knowledge, you know, and like I just said with the last video, I feel like this dream is tying in with that one in a sense because. Uh, you know, that dream, the last message was instructions on how to get rid of a family curse. And, you know, sometimes we don't even realize why we are being put in certain positions or why certain things are happening to us. And sometimes it is because of this. Um, I feel like uh, in this situation, when I had this dream, I don't, I'm not going to say that I felt that I was a slave, but I kind of felt like I didn't have control over my life and I was starting to not like that. I felt as though I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't go and um, enjoy my life the way that I wanted to. And I feel like God is saying that that happened for a reason. Um, to whomever this is for, it's probably for someone specifically. Um, you were put in this position because God is trying to show you that you are in a sense, enslaved. You may not feel like you are. You may think in your mind that you're not. Um, sometimes it looks as if you're not, but you know, 
the way that jobs are today is almost a form of it. And, you know, I'm not throwing any shots to anybody that may have a business and have employees. But in reality, when you are put in a position to where you can tell somebody if they can or cannot do something, some people miss out on all kind of family gatherings. They miss out on graduations, funerals. They miss out on um, weddings and all kinds, vacations and just all kind of things because of a job. And, you know, I remember I was trying to figure out when I was working, while I was working, I was trying to figure out when I would have time to go and see my son because of my schedule. And, you know, sometimes we have bosses. I remember I was working at this nursing home and it was my birthday. And I told them when I started working there, I need my birthday off. And she said, okay, that's fine. Then when it came time for my birthday, she said she couldn't find anybody to work for me. I'm not playing with you. I did not show up. I did not show up. I did not show up. But by the grace of God, I really was sick. But, you know, a little, <laughs> I really truly was sick, y'all. But um, my point is this. Sometimes we can't really see what it is. And, you know, nowadays you make so little. You know, the amount of money that we make per hour is so little that you can barely pay your rent. You can barely buy groceries. You can barely get by. And it's almost very reminiscent of slavery, okay? And it's a problem. I, and I feel like with this, it's, in God's eyes, it's a problem. Um, when I was living off grid, I feel like one thing that I realized, the best way that you can feel as though you have complete control over your life is when you own your own land. That way, that way you can do whatever you want to do on your land. All you got to do is pay your yearly taxes. You have your own business. So you're making your own money. You're creating your own schedule. And you can freely live your life the way that you want to live your life. And I understand everybody can't do it. I understand everybody doesn't want to. But in reality, um, the way that the system is made up, it kind of can put you in a position to where you feel like you can't even live your life, you know? Um, and that's the truth. You know, I left in the middle of a work week, but had I left a day later, I would have missed out on being here for Mother's Day with my mother, with my son, with my family. And, you know, it, in a sense, you know, the way the system is made, it will make it seem like I did something wrong. But in my heart, it, I had enough. I wanted to see my baby. I wanted to see my family. I want to spend time with my family. And I feel like this message is kind of in a sense like God is freeing somebody from this system. Okay. Um, God is opening your eyes. And, you know, in my experience, you know, it wasn't the happiest experience. I'm not going to say that I had fun all the time and I was happy all the time. It was a lot of hard work. Right now, I'm in the middle of resting. Like, I make a video and I rest. And I make a video and I rest. And I'm taking care of business while resting because my body is aching. I am sore and I am tired. Okay? And um, I feel like what God is saying is, you are going to move out of that. You're going to move forward from this position of feeling as though you are just working and that's it. Um, I know people that just work and that's it. And, you know, when you just work to come home and then as soon as you get home, you eat, you go to sleep and then you wake up and you go into work and then you work and then you come home, you eat and then you sleep and then you go to work and then you work and then you come home and you eat and then you sleep and you go to work and it's over and over and over again. Literally, your whole life is passing you by. Versus when you are working and you are doing something you love, you know, because when you're doing something you love, it's not really exactly it's work. But at the same time, it's a work that brings joy to your heart. And, you know, um, that's something that I realized about my channel. It had got to the point to where I felt like I couldn't post what I wanted to on my channel. And that's in reality why I stepped away from it, because I was tired of posting things and then hearing from other people, you know, throwing slugs and feeling some kind of way and all this. Like, I don't have time for that. And in reality, I feel like all of this was, you know, brought to my attention 
when I got home. I realized all of this. I didn't have these problems here. I didn't have to worry about even if I had a dream and somebody in my life was in the dream, they didn't take it personal versus, you know, how other people may feel. I was working somewhere where, you know, at first it was easy for me to make my videos. And I noticed that she started doing little things to try to keep me from doing what I needed to do to have that independence, you know, and it was almost, you know, my independence to me is important. My channel is important. Um, giving you guys these messages is important. And, you know, sometimes you have to step back and realize what is important and what is not. And I feel like in this situation, what God is saying is you have been in a trance and God wants you to wake up from that trance. You are, maybe you're in the position to where Joseph was when he was in the cell and God is trying to free you from that cell. But sometimes you have to actually listen to God. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, um... We don't actually, it's like we hear God, we know what God is telling us to do, but it's not what we want to do. You know, I don't want to stay with family. I don't want to have to move in with anybody. I don't want to have to um, ask for rides. I don't want to have to ride the bus. I don't want to have to do a lot of things. But in reality, you need to take your freedom back. And in order to take your freedom back, you need to do what God is instructing you to. Um, sometimes... It's not fun, but you know, in reality, if you listen to what God is telling you, you will be freed from that. You will be able to be free. You will be able to do as you wish. You will be able to live your life. And you know, um, sometimes we don't even see that these things are entrapping us. We don't even see how a job can entrap us. We don't see how, um, even some people around us, you know, will keep us in that position. They will hold us back. You know, you don't want to be in a position to where your only contact is someone has complete control over your life. You don't want to be in a position to where someone is your boss and they are in control. They, yo, how can I say it? I'm sorry, y'all. It's hard to explain, but you don't want to be in a position where somebody can fire you, kick you out, and um, just in a sense, leave you hanging. You know what I'm saying? I feel like in this situation, God is saying, listen, okay? Somebody, you are in a situation and God is trying to pull you out of that, but you cannot be freed from that if you keep ignoring the voice of God. You cannot... Um, and a lot of times what God is telling us to do is something we don't want to do. It may be something that don't sound fun. Um, it may be something that you aren't a fan of. It may be, it may require things that you don't want to exactly do. But I can be a witness to you while uh, what I had to do to get home or what I had to do to be free from what I felt was oppressing me. It may have been something I didn't want to do, but it was for my better good. And sometimes we have to go through that. Sometimes it's a lesson, regardless if it's a lesson to show you, you know, after you get all the way down to rock bottom, it's nowhere to go but up. After you get to a certain position, it's nowhere to go but up. And once you have received, once you have been in that place, um, you will be in a, you will feel as though you're never going back, you know? Um, and it's not to say that I will never live off grid again, but I will never live with someone else. I, if I move back off grid, first of all, it's going to be closer to my family. First of all, second of all, it's going to be mine. Okay. And you know, and that's just what it is. I don't know what God has planned for me, but if I was to ever, I would make sure that I have the final say so on everything going on around me. And I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, you don't want to be in a position to where you don't have no say so. You don't want to be in a position to where you are at someone's complete mercy. 
and I feel like somebody you are at someone's complete mercy like you have no rights to anything you can't you have no say so and you know I'm not saying that you know that is bad in all aspects you know and like living with my family now I don't have any say so but it's for my better good like it's it's not in a position to where I just feel as though I can't do anything. I feel as though I don't have a life. I feel as though I'm lonely or miserable. It's nothing like that. But, you know, if you are in a position to where you are feeling as though you are miserable, you feel lonely, you feel depressed, get out of there. What are you there for? Why? Why leave yourself in that situation? Yeah, you may have to stay with somebody else, but it is what it is. Yeah, you may have to... Um, you may have to, you know, catch a bus, okay, a Greyhound, you may have to catch a flight, you may have to ta taxis or whatever it is, you may have to walk a little bit, shoot, when I had to get to home, I had to walk, y'all, it took me dang that hour, and, um, that's a lot coming from me, because y'all know, my foot and my knee was just screaming, crying out in mercy and pain but i had to do what i had to do so that i can be in the position that i am in now and sometimes it's not pretty sometimes it's not happy and yeah there was a taxi company that, that could have took the kid but i said nah i'm gonna keep my money in my pocket and walk and you know ironically that's what my dream was y'all know i thought the first uh, i think the first dream that i started back posting when i started back posting my dreams was a dream of me walking to a train and that's literally what happened in real life in real life i walked seriously and the person that wanted to work with me is god okay but getting back to this um Sometimes we are put in a position where someone will make us think that we can't do it. Or, you know, if you keep, you don't want to be listening to someone that is constantly telling you, you can't do this and you can't do that. And this is all that's for you. That's not true. You don't know that. How do you know? How do they know? They don't know that. I, if I want to listen to somebody telling me that I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't do that and I shouldn't get back on my channel and I should... I, if I would have listened to everything that was told to me, I wouldn't be able to pick my life back up. I wouldn't be able to get myself back together. I wouldn't be have been able to hug and kiss on my son. I wouldn't have been able to do a lot of things. And, you know, sometimes people are telling us things not to help us, but to hurt us. Sometimes people are telling us things because it's more beneficial for them for us to stay in that position. Just like the situation with jobs, you know, it's more beneficial for a job owner, a business owner or a boss for you to be there. So they are going to tell you things and twist and turn things in such a way that you feel like you have to stay there. They are going to make you feel as though they don't know what to do without you. They'll be just fine. Straight up. Just fine. They don't need no help. Sometimes people uh, act like they need your help or like they need you. And in reality, they are keeping you entrapped there because it is beneficial to them. And I just feel like with this, God is saying for somebody, you are in a situation where you feel like you are not free. And I feel like for God to have me come on here and say this, you aren't. But God is saying that there is a way for you to be free. You just have to wake up and wake up and listen to what God is telling you to do so that you can get to that that place, that position. And, you know, the last thing I'm going to say is sometimes we work. I'm not going to say that it's nothing. It's something wrong with working. It's nothing wrong with working. However, it is something wrong with you living your life literally to work. And that's it. It is something wrong with you working so much and working so hard that you don't even enjoy your life. You can't forget that life is an experience. You can't forget that God gave you a purpose and your purpose is not to work at the grocery store. Your purpose is not to work at, um, even for some people, you know, 
sometimes uh i remember when i was starting out as a cna i would work doubles almost every day but i eventually stopped and i didn't stop because i didn't love my patients or i didn't love my job i stopped because i wasn't enjoying my life i was in a whole new city and i wasn't even able to enjoy the city i was in because i was working that much and sometimes you have to realize that sometimes you have to wake up to that and you know that is what that is part of what pursued me. I'm not going to say it didn't lead me to this kind of job. It didn't lead me to, you know, become an influencer and eventually become a pastor. But it is what kept me going because I would prefer to be able to live my life the way I want to live my life than to live my life for somebody else. And it's not selfish. It's not mean. It's not self-centered. You are thinking about yourself. You have to love yourself. You do not want to wake up 10 years from now and you have wasted 10 years of your life working at a job that you don't care about. You don't want to wake up 10 years from now and you have not even moved forward. You don't want to wake up 10 years from now and you are miserable. You are lonely and you are sad because you have allowed someone else to control your life. I don't know who this is for, but God is calling you to wake up out of that and God is also calling you to do something. God has been telling you something. I can't tell you what God has been telling you to do because I don't know. But God has uh, already made provisions for you. You just have to leave. That's all you have to do. God has already put it up on somebody's heart to help you. Some God is 2222 on a video when I said that. God has already put it up on somebody's heart to help you. God has already put it up on somebody's heart to realize what's really going on. God has already put it up on somebody's heart to ensure that you move forward. But you have to be woman enough or man enough to listen to God and do it. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye. Sometimes we are in positions because we love somebody. I didn't want to leave my ex. I loved him. But in reality, I had to do what's best for me. And, you know, um, sometimes it hurts. It hurts. It hurts bad. Oh, it hurts bad. It doesn't feel good when you are. It doesn't feel good to say goodbye to someone that we love. In reality, sometimes God allows us to go through things just so that we know it's not for us. Sometimes God allows Sometimes God allows the worst just so that God can pull the best out of you. And you know, it's a lonely road. Um, I feel like for somebody, this is going to be a road where you're going to have to walk alone. I had to walk alone. And you know, it is what it is. But in reality, God is trying to pull you out of something. God is trying to bring you out of this cell i hear this prison you feel like you're in a prison why would you want to live your life that way why would you want to live your life and be miserable and be sad and be hurt don't go through that don't put yourself through that and don't feel as though you know sometimes we be trying to save people i said this yesterday but you are not superman you are not spider-man you are not superwoman, wonder woman. You got to get out of there. You got to say yourself first. You can't always just expect that. Um, sometimes people don't want to be saved. Sometimes, sometimes they don't even want your help. And you have to think about that. And a lot of times that person needs to help themselves. You need to help you. And once you help you and you get you good, then you can help that person. I hear for somebody, you got to get yourself together first. Because it may not be the same kind of provisions. That person may not have the same provisions that you have. You may have to get yourself together and then you can send for them. Just like Joseph. Joseph wasn't able. If Joseph's brothers and family would have came there while he was still a prisoner, they would have been out of luck. You know, S-O-L, okay? S-O-L. And it would have been all too bad, too sad. But it had to be the correct timing. Once Joseph was in this position, he was able to help them. And that's the message. Once Joseph was in this position, he was able to go to Pharaoh directly and ask Pharaoh for his family to stay there. And this is for someone you have to pull yourself out of there first before you can even turn around and think about turning around and calling for somebody else. 
You can't take them with you because they don't have nowhere to go right now. You can't take them with you because y'all will end up in the same predicament. Yes, if um, yes, if you were to attempt to pull them with you, it will be harder. But if you go by yourself, you make provisions and then you come back for them, it won't be as hard. And that's just that. I don't know why God is reminding me of this story of this um this cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs man that had all them people um imprisoned on his land or something like that. And he was beating on them and molesting them and just mistreating them and just drugged them through the mud and just treated them like they was nothing. And he's going to jail now. That woman that got away had to get away on her own. She couldn't go with everybody else. Everybody couldn't go with her. If she would have tried to take everybody with her, he would have noticed immediately. However, because she went by herself, it was able to go smoothly, okay? She was able to contact the police. She was able to get help for everybody. She was able to rescue everybody. And once everybody was rescued, everybody was on the same page. Everybody said he was crazy. And it's, um, you know, it's scary to think that one person can have that kind of power. But in reality, sometimes when um, we go into situations and we don't even know what's really going on. And I feel like this is for somebody. God is calling you to go through your Joseph moment. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. But once you are free, all the knowledge of what to do is going to come to you. Um, sometimes God can't give us the knowledge while we are imprisoned or while we feel in prison or while we are um, oppressed because some of these demons can read minds. I didn't know nothing. I honestly thought that I was doing something. I thought I was going somewhere else. I thought I was meeting. I did not know the plan. God knew the plan. And I just had to tell myself, Star, your plan is stupid. And that's real. It was. I had to tell myself, your plan is stupid, Star. Your plan not going to work. It's never going to work. And it's never going to work because if you try to come up with a plan around somebody that is reading your mind, they are going to know the plan and they are going to make provisions to stop it from happening. So, you know, this is for somebody. And, um, you know, I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I don't know who this message is for, but I pray that you will put your hands on them, Lord. I pray that you will cover them. I pray that whoever is oppressing them, that you will release them from their oppression. take me a while to edit i love you guys to bits and pieces whomever this is for i really pray that god will cover you i pray that god will get you out of there and i pray that god will set you free in jesus name amen